Hello, I'm Carlton Sheets, and welcome to my Investor's Edge video series in this program, How to Sell or Rent Your Property Yourself for Maximum Profits. To help me present this valuable material to you today, I'm joined by a true expert in the subject area, Ms. Donna Blevins. Donna's been active in real estate for 20 years and has earned the prestigious CCIM designation, which stands for Certified Commercial Investment Member. It's like having a, a PhD in real estate. Don is a successful investor and broker, and since 1983 has owned her own real estate company. She's assisted in the sale of literally thousands of pieces of property. She's incredibly successful in selling property for other people. So who better to show you those critical things that you can do to maximize profits when you sell or rent property yourself? And now, let's join my friend, Donna Blevins. Wow, I love this part. How are you all today? Good. Well, I'm really glad you're here today. The program that I'm going to do is a program that is my favorite. What I found is that people don't know um, what their homes need in order to sell. They don't have the ability to look at something that they own and be able to determine it. <coughs> A lot of people say, well, I don't even own a piece of real estate yet. Why in the world would I want to know how to sell it? As far as I'm concerned, in order to be able to be safe in your investing, you have to be able to know how you're going to sell it, how much you have to put into it, what you can sell it for before you buy the property. Does that make sense to you? It's really important to me. I mean, if you look at, at retail sales, Someone would never even consider putting something, buying something for their inventory until they knew what they could sell it for. They know what their profit potential is. Now when I talk about selling real estate, I want you to understand something very important. And that is something that I base all of my real estate counseling on. And that is when I talk about real estate, when I talk about homes, I mean all type of real estate. The concepts of selling your real estate hold true regardless of what type of property it is. You do some changes when you're dealing with, with a home buyer, you're dealing with an investor, but basically a lot of the same rules apply to commercial and investment property. So I want you to understand when I say home, I'm talking about all type of, of real estate. So you can take that, the concepts and you can use those in your real estate uh, investing, you can use it no matter what type of property you're using. <clears throat> Let me give you a little bit of idea about my background and relationship to this part, and that is that I started out in business world as a marketing and advertising consultant. I did not know that's what I was, but that's what I was doing. In fact, I was doing it for five or six years until someone said to me, I believe you're an entrepreneur. And I thought they were cussing at me, frankly, because I didn't know what the word meant at the time. But I was, and somebody called me a consultant, and at times I thought that meant that you were unemployed. But, <laughs> but when I worked as a marketing and advertising consultant, I found that the ideas and the rules and what I learned in advertising apply exactly the same to real estate. You just say, what is it that I'm trying to package? And these are the rules that I'm working with in relationship to the, the, the real estate. The first contract that I ever had in real estate was years ago with a big company in the Southwest. And they were having difficulty with the sales in their company. As a matter of fact, they hired me because their sales had fallen off dramatically. Well, when you've got a problem with a company, you look at the people. People were pretty much above board what you would expect with a real estate company. Not particularly better, not particularly worse. They were just real estate people, real estate salespeople. We looked at their advertising and marketing campaign and it was pretty consistent. And then I said, well, let's look at the inventory. And in 10 days, I inspected 150 houses. <laughs> Holy, <laughs> we moved, <laughs> we moved. And what I discovered, and it was immediate to me because I came to see these houses for the first time, 
is that the houses were simply not prepared to sell. They had had a very small kind of mini recession, local recession in that area, and the, and the values had not appreciated that one year, two years, as much as people had expected. And in order to compensate for that, the people needed to put their attention into the production of, of, of what, they, what they needed to do to make the houses sell, make them more appealing. In realtor talk, what's it called? It's called curb appeal. And it was so apparent. But what I also found out during that time is that people were very possessive of their homes. And it was hard for me to tell them that they needed to wash the dishes and make their beds and, and cut their lawns. <laughs> because what's the number one reason in this country why people sell their homes? <laughs> they don't want a clean house. <laughs> I'm absolutely convinced of that. <laughs> they don't want to clean house because more times than not, when they've done what I said, what they paid for, because when I used to tell them to do it for free, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> because how much is something worth? What you paid for it. If they paid nothing for it, unfortunately, it was worth less. So I found out that I needed to charge for the service. And once I did that, then I could tell people the truth and they would do what it was that I told them to do. And once they cleaned their houses and they got them ready to market, more than 50% of the time, the people decided that they didn't want to sell after all because they fell in love with their homes all over again. <laughs> it's really amazing. And what's exciting is that it can mean the difference between actually selling a property, but it can also mean the difference in a great profit. In one particular instance, I remember a home that had terrible, terrible uh, outside. The, the yard was dead. Uh, there was just overgrowth, and, and everything was so disgusting. And you drove up, and you thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to have all of that work to do. Uh, the, the person that owned the house said, I'll take care of that. They actually put about $42 worth of seed and sod in, in their yards. It wasn't very much at all. And they actually sold the property for $17,000 more than they had expected. I mean, that sounds astounding. But the house on the inside was absolutely gorgeous. People couldn't get there because the outside was crummy. 60% of all real estate is sold when people drive up to the curb. 60%, 6 out of 10 homes are sold before people ever get out of the car. And today, with the computer generated graphics that you have in the multiple listing services, many times people don't even go to the yard. It's based on a photograph alone. So that's really important that you understand how critical that curb appeal is. You can all, oftentimes be a little forgiving on some of the things on the inside as long as it's neat and tidy. The first impressions of a house matter so much. Let me show you a house <laughs> uh, well, let me show you some trees in front of this house. And it, it, this literally was what this house looked like when, when I drove up to it. And I call it the house that hid because there was no way to see that there was absolutely a gorgeous house. All that was done was a couple of trees were taken out. I hate, to, I hate to take out trees because I really do love them. A couple of trees were taken out. Nothing else was done to the house except cleaning it. And a couple other things I'm going to talk about later. And that's what the house was behind the trees. Is that as different as night and day? Absolutely. People could not understand why, excuse me, why they couldn't sell the home. Absolutely amazing. I oftentimes call it the best kept secret in town. Because if your house is the best kept secret, how in the world are people going to be able to get there? There's quite a few different rules that you can use in relationship to what you should do to a property. But I think the best way to do it is let's look at a case study, a before and after, and we'll talk about those as we go along because that's more fun. Remember I said the number one reason 
why people sell their homes is they don't want a clean house. This is an actual house that was for sale. The property was available for a very long period of time. It needed to be sold because of a, a split in the family. <laughs> Divorce settlement, did we talk about that before? <laughs> and the house needed to be sold. And the outside of the house was very appealing. But when you got inside the house, the house was an absolute wreck. Nothing that would have taken that long to deal with. But every place I turned, I knew exactly why this happened. And let me tell you people, I see this time and time again. These are actual photographs of the house. And the people invited me to come to the house. As a matter of fact, I was running an ad as a real estate investor, uh, broker, real estate broker, working as an investor. I disclosed it fully. And I was, I was running ads for buying distressed properties, people that needed to sell their homes. And I went into the post office one day, and uh, someone in the area recognized me and said, don't you buy houses, Donna? And I said, yeah, I do. I said, but they have to work for me. And, and they said, do you mind a little uh, bit of fix up? And I said, no. And they said, well, well come over to the house and, and take a look at it. And that's basically what I saw on the inside. Uh, the kind of things that you take a weekend and throw everything out and, and start all over. What was nice is that when we got to the kitchen, the kitchen was very appealing. Uh, it, was, it was structurally fine. The cabinets were functional. Um, it was just really, everything was really tired, really tacky. It had a lot of wallpaper. Wallpaper is one of the things that you want to avoid, regardless of how much you like it personally. What I say is what you want to do with the homes is to make them generically perfect. Write that down. Generically perfect. You want these homes to be so appealing that they're a palette. What they are is a palette. They are an empty palette for someone to come in and create their own picture. Someone should be able to come into a property and look around and see their belongings there. Who makes the major buying decisions for homes in the United States? Women make the major buying decisions. They want to see their belongings there, their furniture. If you have even the most expensive wallpaper, I guarantee you 99 times out of 100 it's not going to match what she has. Even, even popular things like stencil painting or sponge painting should be reserved for your own personal home. Besides, it's a lot more economical when you fix up something for resale to do it with very simple, bright white ceilings, antique white walls, neutral carpet flooring throughout. This changes depending on some of the areas. Some of the areas of the country predominantly have paneling. And, and that is customary in those areas, and that's just fine. You know, I wouldn't suggest painting paneling unless it's a problem. Some paneling gets, gets old and tired, and, and you need to do something with it, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you have to look at your area, what is customary. But basically, if you can go to the bright white ceilings, antique white walls, go latex paint. Today, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. With semi-gloss on the woodwork so that it, it cleans up very easily. Everyone can see. Everyone can see themselves in that property. Now, we got to the workshop. This guy bragged about his workshop. I happen to like workshops. I'm kind of handy. And I like workshops. But when I went in this workshop, same house, all I could see was this mess. I could not see. I could not see. The space that I could use, I could not walk through it. So what you need to do is basically clean house. If, you want to, if you're living in a house, if you're living in a house and you want to sell the house, take three quarters of what you can see and get rid of it. Take three quarters of what you can see. If you have knickknacks, little things, pack them up and move them out. Don't have little things sitting around. Besides, let's face it, you're going to have an open house for something. You're going to have an open house. People are going to be coming through. You don't want your little valuable things sitting around anyway. So anything that's small and valuable, pack it up, put it away, put it in that crawl space. If you don't have something, an attic. Sorry, you guys have attics, don't you? <laughs> I, mean, 
I, I, since I live in Florida, I don't have basements. As a matter of fact, if we had a basement, I'd have an indoor swimming pool. The water table so high. <laughs> but even I don't suggest putting it in. I don't suggest putting it in your basements. I suggest if you have a home that you're wanting to sell that you live in, and you feel like that you need after after today and after after the video, if you feel like that what you need to do is to get rid of the stuff, and you want to keep it, mine. I like my stuff, and you want to keep it. Put it in boxes and rent a storehouse. Take it out to the storehouse. Don't put it in your basement. And I said put it in your crawl space, but don't do that. Don't put it in your attic because what you want to do is you want to show the prospective buyer all the space, not all the stuff that you have. You want to show them all of the space that you have for them to use. And they had a beautiful lanai. A lanai is a fancy word that we use in Florida for a screen porch. And let's see, what did they have? They had tires and wheels and uh, a broken down grill and it was mildewed and, and very unappealing. Every time you turned around, it was something that you would not want to move into and they could not understand why their home had not sold, honestly. Absolutely could not understand why it had not sold. Remember I said wallpaper, now if you love this wallpaper, please forgive me and if you love it, that's fine. Keep it in your own home. But if you want to sell your home, take it off and paint the bathrooms white. Where do people look first? They look at kitchens and they look at bathrooms. All they need to do is to be clean and modern looking. They don't have to be expensive. But people don't want to buy your dirt. Chip sink. These enamel sinks over metal chip really, really badly, but they're very inexpensive uh, to replace. And someone that doesn't know that doesn't know that you can get them for under $100 and have somebody else do it. I mean, you're saying they're going down and you can get them for 40 Well, I know that, but, but they're so inexpensive even to have someone else do it. And isn't that appealing? Yes. Men, I'm not your mom. But when you, when you show your house, put the lid down. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> women have a hard enough time with their own husbands. They don't want to buy a house where the lid is trained to be up. <laughs> so when you're showing the house, remember, things like that. You want the lid down. You want things that are put out that are pretty. As a matter of fact, let me show you. The front of this house, it's very appealing. It's, this, it's a curb appeal. Now, this is an instance where it was a beautiful house, and it was a very beautiful house and very consistent with the neighborhood. They, the price that they were asking was very reasonable. They had an old FHA loan that was assumable, no qualifying, cost $45 to assume. But nobody could get to it because of what looked like inside. This is the outside, it was beautiful, but once you got inside, and the people were entirely impervious to it. What I wanna do is take that same house and show you the after shots. Now, a lot of them aren't gonna be that different because you, sometimes you can't see as much, but I wanna tell you what we did, okay, so you get a feel of it, because I think that's the best way. Number one, I was able to buy the house with a $45 assumption fee on, on an old FHA loan and they wanted out of the house so badly that they carried the, they carried the down payment back on a mortgage. And, and it was an absolute luxury. I had to put several thousand dollars into the house because it needed flooring, it needed wallpaper, it needed paint. But the roof was sound, the house was sound, it was in a great location. So all in all, it was a win-win situation. I was able to close quickly for them, they were able to get what they want, and I was able to eventually make a profit. I actually moved into the house for a period of time. That's one of the reasons why you're going to see more furnishings in this house. Uh, and this is the way that I presented the house for sale. And it sold in a very short period of time. And I made a dandy profit on it. It was very good for me. It was good for everybody. It was good for the people that came in because since I had an assumable loan, I was able to do an actual refinance myself. I did a, I did a wraparound for them so that they would, uh, uh, so it would be easy for them. He wanted to close in six or seven days because of their particular situation. And frankly, as a real estate investor, 
and then a real estate broker, I have found one of the things that has helped me over the years is to be flexible. And I have been flexible because there's sometimes when I have been homeless. And the only reason I can think to be, a good reason for you to be homeless is when your house sells so quickly you can't get another one to replace it. And, and that's what I consider to be the very best thing that can happen. And, and that's kind of fun when you get into that situation. Well, this is, it's a little, it's a little light. But the cabinets were kept. You notice before I told you the cabinets were in good condition. And what I want you to look at is right over here. It's a very inexpensive little dinette. This is the way that you show a house when somebody's coming to see it. I set the table, put stemware, um, put uh, uh, napkins. You know, set it and make it very appealing. Was, was I having a meal? No. No. As a matter of fact, uh, they say that if you're a real estate broker or sometimes a real estate investor, you kind of are on a real estate diet. You kind of eat when you can because you're running so often. And unfortunately, I kind of eat hand to mouth because I enjoy what I do so much that I, I oftentimes neglect some of the, the luxuries. But this is what you want to do in relationship to showing the house. This house was shown in the middle of the day, and what do you notice about that? You notice the lamp is on. When you show a house, for, when you have an open house, when you have a showing of a house, you want to turn every light on in the house, regardless of what time of day it is. Uh, you want to open your, if you have blinds, you want to open them slightly, but not so much that you get harsh lighting. You want to think of somebody coming into that house and how appealing it could be. And you want to select things that are very neutral. If you can see, that's, that's not expensive furniture. That's, that's very, very ordinary type of stuff. Um, it, was, it was stuff that was also generic, because when I get, I have a couple of, of houses of furniture um, that are actually separate, different colors. Uh, and they're very inexpensive, but I put them together over the years. And, and they'll go in different colored houses. Uh, and I have uh, things that go with it, like this is one of the, the bathrooms. It's all white. It's all simple. Uh, you lay out uh, uh, little towels. Men, you're probably saying, yeah, 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 that's probably, you know, it, it, is, that, is that something that's really important? It really is important. It sells so fast. And what I do is I have a, I have a couple of different baskets. I have what I call my gray basket. Can you see that at all? Basically, I have a gray basket, a white basket, and, and like a, a, a beige basket. And I keep in it all of the different colors. This is just showing that I have towels, fresh towels and washcloths on every one of the hangers. We even do things like tuck the toilet paper roll in. I mean, that may sound like a little overkill, but do you know, do you like to go to a hotel and have things laid out nicely for you? So does everyone else. And when they look at a home, they like to see that same type of thing. Uh, there's another uh, uh, towel laid out, and here's a, a, a man's soap, soap and brush. What's that called? Shaving. Thank you. Shaving mug. What is that? A man's shaving mug. You can tell I <laughs> don't use it much. Anyway, <laughs> it's a man's shaving mug. Little things like that that you want to put out. It's very important. But if you're living in the house, what do you do with all the stuff that you use on a daily basis? You put it away. You put it away, and you don't, have it, you don't have it laying out. Remember that lanai, that porch, that screen porch? You know, these chairs cost under 10 bucks, and it's a, it's a plastic table that's very inexpensive, nothing fancy, but by doing something small, actually these are undersized chairs, by doing something small, it helps people to see the size and the space around it. Now what you want to do is you want to have a one sheet. I call it a one sheet. You take, uh, you take a 35 millimeter photograph of, of the property. Um, uh, today, scanning into computers is so, it is, is so easy to do. Uh, some of the, of the uh, self-help places that have computer services are able to do that. I don't even think that's necessary. I frankly think a 35 millimeter uh, photograph in the larger size, the four by six, Put on a sheet of paper with information about your house, have it typed up or word processed with the basic information about the house. And please remember to put your name and phone number on the house as well as the house's address. That may seem like an overkill when I tell you that, but 
it's something which has been left off before, and people see this beautiful house, and, and you get involved with what you're doing, and you just forget a couple of items. So that one sheet can be used to hand out to um, people as you see them. You give it out when people come in for an open house. Uh, you can give it out at, uh, you can post it in grocery stores. There's all different ways that, that you can.